In 1993, Meng Wanzhou graduated from Shenzhen University and came to Huawei. She thought her father would arrange a good job for her. As a result, the founder of Huawei, Ren Jingfei, asked her to start from the most basic receptionist. Not only was she responsible for the reception, but she and three other girls undertook the call of the switchboard and the printing of documents. The work is trivial and hard, and there is little intersection with my father. In 1996, when Huawei participated in the International Communication Exhibition for the first time, Meng Wanzhou went to Moscow with a delegation. This may be her first time abroad. Although she is the eldest daughter of the founder of Huawei, Meng did not serve as Huawei CFO until 2011. This year, she has worked in Huawei finance for more than 15 years. It was not until 2013 that the Chinese media learned that Meng was the daughter of Ren Jingfei. Within Huawei, only a few people know her identity. On September 25, 2021, Meng Wanzhou returned to China from Canada on a plane chartered by the China's government. On this day, she became the focus of global attention. However, when she was a child, Meng Wanzhou was just the least conspicuous of thousands of children. She was also a problem girl whose parents worried about her, she was the last one in the exam, and she was afraid that she would not be able to enter the university. Her father also worried about tuition fees. So, how did Meng rely on her own efforts step by step to get to the decision-making level of Huawei? In addition, her love story is even more touching. Today, let's talk about a real Meng Wanzhou that you don't know. Meng Wanzhou was born in 1972. She spent her childhood with her grandparents in the impoverished Guizhou countryside, and it was difficult to see her busy parents. However, education in rural areas is very backward, and Meng Wanzhou's grades are at the bottom of the class without the supervision of her parents. Feeling very worried about it, her father took her to the city he is living in, which changed the situation. In 1988, through her own hard work, Meng Wanzhou was admitted to university. Ren Jingfei was both happy and anxious. He worried that he would not have the ability to support his daughter tuition fee. His worry was not unreasonable. Just a year before his daughter was admitted to university, he suffered a major accident. In 1987, Ren Jingfei made a mistake in an external transaction of the Nanhai Petroleum Group, resulting in a loss of 2 million yuan for the company. No matter how humbly he pleaded with the leader, the company fired him decisively. At this time, his wife also filed for divorce from him, burdened with the double blow of millions in debt and family breakdown. Ren Jingfei was very panicked. At this moment, he decided to start his own business. He and his former colleagues raised 20,000 yuan and registered Huawei. At that time, Huawei was just a little-known small workshop. In 1993, Meng joined Huawei shortly after graduating from university. The company was small at first, and Meng's job was to do odd jobs and organize documents. After three years of working in Huawei silently, no one in the company even knew that she was Ren Jingfei's daughter. Meng's real change was when she attended two communication conferences. When she went to Beijing to attend a communication conference, she found that Huawei was so trivial. Shocked, she began to make plans silently in her heart. She applied for the East China University of Science and Technology, hoping to improve herself and contribute to Huawei. When a person is determined to change, she is invincible. In 1998, Meng successfully obtained an MBA degree from Huazhong University of Science and Technology. That is to say, from this moment on, Meng is no longer that dispensable role in Huawei. In Huawei, she is increasingly playing an irreplaceable role. In the operation of Huawei's finance department, she manages it in an orderly manner. In 2003, Meng Wanzhou was responsible for establishing a globally unified Huawei financial organization. In the following years, Meng Wanzhou also led Huawei to establish five financial sharing centers. In 2007, Meng Wanzhou served as the person in charge of Huawei's integrated financial service transformation project, and her business level has improved by leaps and bounds. With the strengthening of her ability, the company gave her more authority. She has successively served as Director of Huawei International Accounting Department, Director of Finance Department of Hong Kong Huawei, President of Financial Management Department, 
President of Sales Management and Capital Financing, etc. In 2011, Meng first appeared in the public eye. It was Ren who put her on the list of Huawei's board of directors and served as Huawei CFO. This caused an uproar, and some even said that Ren intentionally handed over the Huawei company to his daughter. Ren vetoed it, and said that he would not hand over the company to his children to inherit. Huawei needs people with core technology, and only by mastering core technology can it lead China's technological development. In 2017, Meng was on the list of China's top 10 outstanding businesswomen, ranking 8th. In 2018, Huawei voted to elect Meng as the vice chairman of Huawei. There is no doubt that Meng has come to where she is today through a little bit of hard work on her own. And Meng was detained in Canada for 1,028 days, and she withstood the assessment during this darkest time. In order to distract herself, she learned oil painting and purified her soul. Perhaps due to the impact of her parents' divorce, Meng's marriage did not go well at first. In 10 years, she married twice, and she gave birth to three sons on the first marriage. Meng Wanzhou once affirmed in public that her ex-husband is a qualified father, and she didn't hide her gratitude to her ex-husband at all. Her second marriage was perfect. Her husband Lu Xiaozong is three years younger than her and has been a schoolmaster since childhood. After graduating, he stayed in the United States to obtain a master's degree. After graduating in 1996, he joined a Huawei branch. In 2001, he was sent to Mexico to explore the market, from salesperson to project manager, and then to CFO of the subsidiary. In 2006, Liu Xiaozong resigned to start his own business, started investing, and established Chongqing Depu Foreign Language School. On the list of shareholders of Chongqing Jiazhong Investment, he holds 40% of the shares. In February 2007, 35 year old Meng Wanzhou married 31 year old Liu Xiaozong in Hong Kong. Now the two have walked hand in hand for 13 years and gave birth to a lively and lovely daughter. In December 2018, Meng Wanzhou was detained at the behest of the United States when she was transiting a plane in Canada and faced life imprisonment. Liu Xiaozong made a decisive decision after learning about it and flew to Canada immediately. He urgently sold his real estate in Canada to raise his wife's bail. He knew that his wife was a workaholic and the time of detention must be very difficult. So he contacted a doctoral program at a local business school. When applying for bail, Meng Wanzhou emphasized, if I am released, I just want to stay with my husband and daughter. I haven't read a good book for several years. On September 25, 2021, Meng finally came home. At Shenzhen Airport, Meng Wanzhou had just walked out of the airport. Her husband held a rose on tiptoe and waved his hands to Meng Wanzhou and shouted, I love you. Meng replied with tears, I love you too. Well, thanks for your listening, and please be free to put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.